I think you're taking sort of intense literal logic and applying it to a colloquial situation that has everything to do with tradition and nothing to do with literal truth, right? Who are you and why? Nice. Do you want to go first? I'd rather you did. Oh, thank you. <laughs> My name is Dion Almer. The why is an interesting one, you know? So um, I've worked with this guy for a long time, lots of different companies. Um, way back in the day, we did this thing called Ajaxian. There's this thing called Ajax. You were too young to, to know it. I remember <laughs> Ajax. <laughs> I'm not young enough. <laughs> That's... Uh, and that was, you know, really fun to kind of see the web kind of come back and go from docs to apps and the like. Uh, so I've been living in the web for a long time. Uh, used to be at Google. I'm now back at Google running DevRel for uh, a few different teams across the web, Android, Assistant, and other things. What about you? Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm Ben Galbraith. I uh, am on the Chrome team. I lead product for the folks who are working on the web platform. So the folks who are thinking about how the web works when That's we render a web page and things. Yeah. <laughs> We, we've been doing like these, these interview things like all day. Okay. So we've we never we've, done interviews before. Yeah, and we, we missed your talk. So we, we opened the talk just by showing that uh, PWAs are everywhere. And PWAs, it's fair to ask what the, what the heck that is. Basically, um, the web has been evolving dramatically over the past few years. And it's been getting a ton of new capabilities. And it's a whole new platform that it used to be just four or five years ago. And so we shared a lot of data around this. And there's kind of two categories. One is, well, what's actually changed about the web? And the other is, what happens when people take advantage of the new capabilities that are in the web? And we shared a bunch of case studies. Getting to the capability side, the big one is this thing called Service Worker. Which I've, heard I've, I've heard of this. <laughs> Have you? Go on. Have you? <laughs> Let me explain it to you me, in very simple oh, terms okay. <laughs> so that you can understand. Oh, but it's like forever, everyone's understood the web is pages, pages that the browser requests and renders. And in uh, Service Worker is the first major new primitive on the web that changes the game. Because with Service Worker, you now have this code that's resident in the browser. It can receive events from the site. Even when the user's left the page, you can use it to override the network. I love how you guys are critiquing my explanation in real time. <laughs> it's like, actually really good. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, but yeah, it, uh, it lets you as a developer take control of the networking stack, which is seems like a geek. Why would, that, why would you want to do that? But it's super important because there are a lot of people using the web who have intermittent, uh, intermittent connectivity where it just drops out or it's really slow. And so as a developer, you're in the driver's seat. It doesn't show you the dyno screen. If there's a, if there's a problem, you can create these really smooth experiences. Yeah. I feel like this time too, we actually talked about the Google properties are actually using this. No, that's off, right, that's right. Let me, let me wrap up service where we cook. So like the big news is that it's finally in Safari and it, has, <laughs> yes. it hasn't been for a long time. And, uh, and it's finally an edge. But yeah, you were talking about some other stuff. You, yeah, like yeah. Google Search, actually using a service worker. Got to talk about that today. 50% less JavaScript. Yeah, that's right. Uh, all of the intermittent well, things. Number. You do a search, you're offline. When you come back online, do the search, pop back. Hey, you want the results? So we shared a bunch of these examples. Uh, and then we had, uh, I think, some pretty exciting new stuff to share. I think stuff that's new for a lot of people. The problem with the web is that it's out in the open. So for insiders, what a problem. Like, there's really not a lot of new things to say. And if there is, that's a problem, right? Because <laughs> like we don't control the web at Google. So we're not going to like have this brand new thing. But we're highlighting a lot of the recent developments, one of which is this thing called desktop PWAs. Yes. Oh. This is cool. We showed how Spotify is using desktop PWAs. So you go to their site. And they can, uh, you can install it to your to your uh, your launcher in this case in Chrome OS, and it gets its own top level window. Yep. So like Alt Tab now works with websites. Oh, so it's, good. It's fantastic, right? I, I'm glad we we did that on mobile first. Yeah. But it it. It felt like it was a missing piece that we couldn't do on the Productivity desktop. on the web is a big deal. Like we talk about mobile, 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 and mobile is super important, but there's billions of people on the desktop. But uh, but the other thing is like using a lot of these popular productivity apps as like top level windows on Chrome OS because that's where it is now. We're bringing it to Windows and Mac, but it's not there yet. Um, and I felt like the, that lots of companies doing their apps in in Electron shows that there was a desire to do that. There's right? so much to, to write web yeah. and just have it as an as if it was a normal app on Let the Let me computer. talk to you about AutoCAD, because AutoCAD, they created a web version of their application, which is like kind of mind blowing. Like you, yeah. you go to a lot of analyst speeches and like the intelligent analysts are up there going like, well, a lot of stuff's coming to the web, but old applications like AutoCAD will never come to the web or it'll take them a really long, it's here. It, they and actually shipped it wasm. in March. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And I said old, AutoCAD's been like innovating a ton since it shipped. So it's actually a pretty cutting edge, but they brought their C++ code base to the web. So it's a sounding Great, right? So kind of like job done, we can relax for the next few no, years. Can I take everything. the negative side? 
Oh. Okay, I think we're done here now. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> uh, so I think the interesting thing about the state of the web, like the talk is about like everything that's going on, all the, good, the all of the good things, but um, that's not always that's not the entire web that you actually experience every day. And we want to keep adding capabilities. We want to keep bringing Electron back to the web and Cordova back to the web and all these things. But how do we get the long all tail. of the long tail in there. And that's why we do a lot of work with the WordPresses and all these different CMSs to how can we affect like that long tail? Of the yeah, web. what does the new capabilities matter if nobody uses them, right. right? And I feel like we're kind of unlocking both at the moment. Um, well, that's where AMP comes in too, because a, a lot of the keynote was talking about AMP because the web platform has a ton of capabilities, but it's also become a little complex. I mean, I don't know if you noticed. Uh, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> you don't say. It can be hard to figure out how to do it. And so AMP is all about how can we make the web really easy for a set of really targeted use cases with an opinionated approach. And it's been maybe a little controversial. And this year we did a couple of things that I'm excited about. One is that we announced that we're fixing the problem with AMP URLs. And if you don't oh, know what that issue is, but I but yes. uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's this double-edged server. Amp does this cool thing where like it hosts content on this server that optimizes it and like shrinks images and all this stuff, but it's hosted on that server. And so- um, I always understood why they were doing it, but still the, the artifact of the URL was just- So annoying. And it's annoying to everybody. Some people look at the URL and they think we're trying to like move the whole internet onto our origin, onto our domain, which is like not at all what we want. So there's this new emerging standard called web packaging which on itself could be like the subject of a conversation. I'm super excited about it. But from a high level, what it does, it lets you as a developer take your site and effectively wrap it in a secure envelope and you just say, say package. a package, <laughs> maybe a better metaphor. And then and like it doesn't matter where it comes from, it's advertised as though it came from your origin. And so you right. can imagine like a browser of the future the magic that's of more like peer to peer, right? So like if you're in this area where you can't actually get to, let's say the New York Times, if any peer has a version of the New York Times that's like fairly recent, you can get it from them. Yep. Creating this really decentralized networking thing, which is at the heart of the original spirit of the yeah. internet. Anyway, so, so AMP's able to use web packaging and uh, it's an emerging standard, we'll see. The other thing that I'm excited about is that uh, we've announced that AMP is embracing web standards and things like the Chrome user experience report so that we'll be able to use the actual performance of web pages to decide whether or not they're fast. Oh, so that's what gives it the little icon, right? Well, today, so today you see that icon if something's AMP. And moving forward, we've shared our intent to use things like the Chrome User Experience Report and other things as, in, as the canonical indicator for whether or not something's going to perform really well. We always talk about performance with AMP, but there's the privacy preservation piece to this too, right? Yeah, that's Where right. Like, yeah. If I go in, I'm in an aggregator, if I prefetch, or start pinging over to this other server, then all of a sudden, V on the user can be on search, and jakearchibald.com knows something and a set of cookie on me, and that's kind of weird. Without right? you ever clicking Without on that me link. me ever knowing, yeah, right. exactly. So yeah. by having it somewhere else on Google servers or whatever AMP cache it's on, um, we can hide that, and now with web packaging, it's baked into the platform. So that's really exciting, I think. So what, what do we think the web needs to do within the next 10 years to survive? I mean, there's the foundations and there's the real future future stuff, right? Yeah. And like foundationally, we just need to fix the, uh, the performance problem on the web. You don't just say it. focus in on getting people <laughs> using the web. I mean, the web is this fantastic treasure. I feel like if you look at it, what do we have in the web? We have this open ecosystem where the standards can be implemented on any platform. I mean, think about that for a second, because most other platforms use their ecosystem as a, as a walled garden to block other people and to sort of chain people in that ecosystem. The web is totally open. We've got this inherent indexability, so you can go through and discover it. You don't have like a single gatekeeper or toll collector. Now, these are just fantastic attributes of the web. One of my first talks as a Googler, is I was using a slide where I opened a website on a Nintendo DS. Ah, and I was like, no, that's re that's really a unique feature of the platform. Like, you write a website, and suddenly it is, is really in your car, cool. on your phone, on a Nintendo DS. But I, I think, I think, Jake, like, the web is worth having in society. The way I, like, yeah, the I that's an understatement. But, so, so, but I, I think, like, when you talk about ten years, what I'm really focused on is how can we make sure that the web remains the platform where developers can bring their best experiences. Because I think there's a lot of competing platforms. Some of them can do a better job at animations and visual effects in the web. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know if that's a fair statement. But Not 10 years from now, though. Yeah, we'll no, that, that, uh, <laughs> two, two, two years from now. Maybe, One year from now? But, uh, so, so we've got to make sure developers have the capabilities they need. We've got to make sure that users actually prefer the web. And we've got to make sure that browsers are where computing is moving. 
And when you think about that frame, we have a lot of work to do. I feel like developers, we've got to do a lot. Houdini is one of my favorite projects. Uh, but, but second set of circuits. There's, there's a lot of additional stuff we need to do. So when you talk about 10 years, I want to see the web platform evolve to have more capabilities. I don't want to see us chasing app platforms. I don't want to see us advertising the web as kind of like, it's almost as good as this app platform. Yeah. You, should, you should develop websites that are like apps. That maybe is a controversial old. statement. You were going to say the web has its own unique flavors, right? Or it, has, it has its own unique capabilities and use cases where, like, that's some, right. some, like there is still use cases. I say no, that's a use case for a native platform. That's yes. not necessarily something you want to solve on I the web. I couldn't agree more. I think if if what you as a developer want to build is something that feels like it's an extension of some specific operating system, that's a native app, and you'd be kind of crazy to use the web for that. But if you want to engage with the most users you can, if you want to do it in a way that gives the user the best experience in terms of getting something done and being able to have sessions that span devices and things like that, that's the web. That's what the web should be good for. Someone came up to me and asked me for a selfie before I was over the moon. But then he said, thank you very much for Facebook. He thought I was Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, I think it is the blue. I it's think the, it's the blue. Well, and the face. It's probably also the face.